This is going to be called Mid-Year Bible Resolutions for 2020. Instead of waiting till January to start doing what you need to do, why not go ahead and just start doing it now? But number one, break yourself from wicked thoughts. A common New Year's resolution is to think more positively in the new year. But a better one would be to think more purely. Not positively, but purely. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So what if you kept every thought in your head under the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ? Every time you sin, you see something you like, you think about it, and then you go through with the act. But what if you break yourself from wicked thoughts? You would have a lot less sin acted out in your life. What if in 2020, for the rest of 2020, you try your best to control your thought life? Proverbs 24, 9 says, The thought of foolishness is sin. Get your thoughts under control and you won't sin as much for the rest of this year. The thought is a sin that leads to more sins. Replace your thoughts with biblical thoughts. Replace your wicked thoughts with praying without ceasing. You have verses like Philippians 4, 8, which says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be on any praise, think on these things. So think on those things. Get an index card, write down about 20 verses, all through the day, <clears throat> pull it out, and read four words of the verse. Say the four words over and over again in your head until you get it memorized. Repeat until you get all the verses memorized. This will kill some wicked thinking for the remainder of 2020. Psalms 10, 4 says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Try to put the Lord or something pure in all your thoughts. Quit thinking about bad things people have said to you and how they hurt you and how you're going to get them back on repentance. Replace those thoughts with something that is worthwhile. Psalms 94, 11, The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Matthew 9, 4, And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Think about this. Every little thought you have, the Lord knows it. And you'll be judged for those wicked thoughts and those filthy daydreams. Psalms 119, 113, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Make up your mind that you're going to hate your wicked thoughts and put your mind on the book. Fall in love with the book enough to meditate on it all day long. Isaiah 55, 7, Let the wicked forsake his way and the right, unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So break yourself from wicked thoughts in 2020 for the remainder of 2020. And next, bite your tongue. A common New Year's resolution is to eat better. Be more careful about what you put in your mouth is, is a common New Year's resolution. But a better New Year's resolution that you can go ahead and start now in the middle of the year is to do better on what comes out of your mouth. Uh, James 3, 6 says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. That's your tongue. Proverbs six nineteen. One of the seven things the Lord hates is someone who sows discord among brethren. In Proverbs 6, 12 through 15, A naughty person, a wicked man, Walketh with a froward mouth, he winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with, with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart, he deviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly 
shall he be broken without remedy. The Lord hates the mouth of those that go around gossiping, backbiting, lying, manipulating, deceiving, cussing, and sowing discord with their tongue. In Romans 1.30, it mentions backbiters and that long list of sins that's associated with a rubber bait mind. And then in Proverbs 12, 17 through 18, it says, He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false, false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Proverbs 15, 4, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. The best thing you can do in 2020 is worry less about what you put in your mouth and be more concerned about what's coming out of your mouth. Are you using your tongue to ruin your testimony? Are you are you using your tongue to ruin the testimony of others? Are you hasty in your words to the point you're discouraging people without knowing it, not giving much thought in the words that are about to come out of your mouth? I hear people say, I just speak what's on my mind. And that sounds all tough and stuff, but that's a bad idea. Your mind is wicked. Your heart is deceitfully wicked. Don't speak what's on your mind so much. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. You can tell what a man loves by listening to what he talks about. Get around someone who talks about the book. Maybe it will rub off on you. So break yourself from wicked thoughts. Bite your tongue, and next, bring out the Word of God. A new common New Year's resolution is to read more or read a certain book you've been putting off. Here's a better one. Read the Word of God. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Isaiah thirty four sixteen Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Psalms 149, 6 Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand. The two-edged sword is the word of God. For the remainder of 2020, decide that you're going to keep it in your hand. Get a KJV Bible app or something for your phone. Carry a pocket-sized Bible. Get a cheap Bible to carry in your car. Lay them around the house. Put one next to the toilet. If it's there and it's in arm, arm's reach, you'll be more likely to read it. I've been saved for close to 10 years now. I've had a full-time job and a family, and reading the Bible through is very doable. My favorite plan is five chapters in the Old Testament, five chapters in the New Testament a day. And I'll do more depending on how short the chapters are because I like to have a few hours of study time left where I can just dig in the book. You want to do both. You want to read and you want to study. In 2017, um, I think I did 10, 20 New Testament chapters a day, something like that. Read the New Testament through 12 times in one year. That's just... 10 or so short New Testament chapters a day and you can read the New Testament in one year more than the average Christian will read it in their entire life. And I mean 10 New Testament chapters can take you 30 minutes to an hour depending on if you're in the book of Luke or not. It's a lot easier than you think. And we need to be reading more. I need to read more. I need to be doing 10 in the old, 10 in the new. But I'm trying to have a balance of reading and study time. There's a difference between studying and reading. You need both. The Bible says read. The Bible says study. Uh, I've been a little, I benefit a lot more personally from studying. So most of my free time is spent doing that instead of just reading it through. But if you do five in the Old and five in the New Testament, then it will put you through the Old Testament two times and the New Testament seven times. That's my favorite plan right there. The most doable plan for me. Now, for the rest of 2020, you need to bring out the book. Number four, you need to block the enemy with prayer. 
A common New Year's resolution is to stay in touch with a loved one more for the new year. But there's a better one. Stay in fellowship with God for the new year and block the enemy with prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Now, you can't pray every second, but those times at work when you're just working and can't do anything else, that's a good time to just rack up in a few hours of prayer. Pray when you wake up. Pray before you eat. Pray before you get in the car. Pray for your kids because nobody else is going to. If you do all this, you're going to rack up a few hours of prayer. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 says, Finally, brethren, pray for us, that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you. So pray for your pastor. Pray for your Sunday school teacher. Pray for random pastors you listen to on the internet and that their sermons and the words of God, that they'll reach thousands for God, God's glory. James 5, 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. So pray for the afflicted. Somebody's always in pain. Somebody is always facing trouble in their life. Pray for somebody else's kid who is out living in the world. See how much you love your kid. Think about that. How much you love your kid. That person loves their kid like you love yours. And you would want somebody to pray for your kid. So pray for their kids. James 5.16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So pray for the sick saints. There are Christians laying in bed right now who can't get up and go like you can go. Pray for them. There are Christians who have eye trouble and can't read the Bible. Pray for them. There are Christians today who can't see it can't hardly see how they're going to be able to bear this life anymore. So pray for them. Pray for the president and all that are in authority. When you have a hard time praying, just remember that God is there. You can draw nigh to God. The God that made the universe is one call away, and he's there. The same God that holds the breath of every mighty man, every athlete and celebrity in his hands is there for you to talk to. You would like to talk to these famous athletes like Stephen Curry or Peyton Manning or whoever else. Remember that God is more famous than they are and more mighty than they are. They have to pray to him. So you have 24-7 access To the God of heaven. Why wouldn't you want to talk to him? Now next. The next thing you should do. For the remainder of 2020 is. Be nice to everybody. Because everybody is having a hard time. A common. New year's resolution is. Make yourself happy. This year. That's bad advice. That's a bad resolution. For the remainder of 2020, worry about someone else first. Ephesians 4.32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. It's funny how you, how you have these guys who have books of the Bible memorized. They know all the events of the end times. They know how to find Jesus Christ on every page, yet they can't even be courteous or friendly or nice to a stranger in a grocery store. They don't have enough sense. If somebody drops money on the ground in front of them, they don't give it back. They pick it up and put it in their pocket. I know people who claim to be getting to heaven by their own goodness, but every time they go to a restaurant, they end up leaving with something free because they won't stop complaining and just ruining their testimony with people. They don't know how to interact with others. They don't know how to put others first. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Make up your mind that for the rest of 2020, you're going to be patient with all men. Don't blow a fuse. Don't fly off the handle. Realize that not everyone is at the same level of truth that you are at. Realize that lost people are going to act like lost people. 
not like saved people. Lost people act like lost people. And that sometimes saved people even act like lost people. Be nice to the waitress at the restaurant. Is that hard? Be nice to the cashier. Be patient with all men. Work on your road rage. You don't have to blow the horn every time someone pulls out in front of you. Have you pulled out in front of someone before yourself? Okay, then why are you so mad when somebody pulls out in front of you? Is it not an honest mistake? Remember that mistakes happen. People are people just like you. They're human. They have feelings just like you have. Why ruin someone else's day because you're having a bad day? You don't have to run and tell on the previous shift, the workers on the previous shift, because your work area doesn't look as good as you think it should. James uh, 3.17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Look at these things. Peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, without partiality. Are you easy to be entreated? When someone asks you a question, do you quickly get mad? Do you mock them or make fun of their question? If so, then you aren't easy to be entreated. Are you without partiality? Do you treat people the same no matter their car, their clothes, their race, or whatever? James 2, 1 through 4, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. If they're coming to your assembly, a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and they're coming in also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? So you see from these verses, don't respect someone more than somebody else because of their material possessions or because of who they are. You need to treat everyone the same. Be nice to everybody because everybody's having a hard time. The next thing, you need to bear precious seed. A common New Year's resolution is to be a better help to others. But there's a better one. For the rest of 2020, help others by leading them to Jesus. Psalms 126 and verse 6, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Find some way to get out the gospel. Bear precious seed. Put out the word of God that will lead to others being saved. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Proverbs 11:30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. If you're out winning souls for the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have beautiful feet. Beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace. So quit letting your feet be quick to mischief. You can give out tracts. You can go knock on doors. You can witness on Facebook. You can witness in Walmart. You can put a tract in the, in the beer cartons at Walmart. That way when somebody buys a beer, they're going to read that tract. Romans 9, 3, For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. That's what Paul said. He had such a burden for lost souls that he wished himself a curse for the Jews if it meant they would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe hell is real and people are going there, it will help you get the gospel out. Romans 10, 1, Brethren, my heart's desire and pray to God for Israel is that they might be saved. This should be the desire, our desire for our family, for our friends or co-workers, random people on the street, and even our enemies. Jeremiah 48.10 Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Your sword is the word of God. Don't keep it back from leading one of the devil's soldiers to the army of the Lord. And next, number seven, what should you do for the remainder of 2020? Burn the fat. A common New Year's resolution is to burn the fat, lose weight. But I'm not really referring to that. I'm referring to something else. In Exodus 29, 12 through 13, it says, And thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock, and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger, and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. 
and thou shalt take all the fat that covereth the inwards, and the caul that is above the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, and burn them upon the altar. So the fat being burned on the altar can be a picture of the sin in your life. Burn it off. A common New Year's resolution is to burn some fat. But more importantly than losing weight, you need to burn some sin off. The Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Get your Bible reading plan and it will help you burn some fat for the remainder of 2020. Get some good preaching CDs and it will burn the fat off of you. The amount of preaching on the internet is insane. You can listen to just about any King James preacher you want for hours and hours and hours. Hebrews 12.1 says, Wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It says, let us lay aside every weight. You can't run your race as good with all the sin fat on you. Burn the fat. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess your sin and live for God. Proverbs twenty-eight thirteen: He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Don't act like the fat isn't there. Some people are okay with being overweight. And the fat being there doesn't bother them. They just keep on eating. And when they look in the mirror, it's like they don't even see the fat. There's people like that. Don't be like that in your spiritual life. Burn the fat. Be glad the fat bothers you. You're in a bad shape if your sin doesn't bother you anymore. Don't hide it. Don't keep it a secret. And let your conscience just keep getting more seared. Confess it and forsake it. John 8, 11 says, And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Jesus didn't condone sin. He said, Go and sin no more. Romans 6, 15, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. We may be saved by grace through faith without works, but that doesn't mean we should just sin anyway. Just because we are saved by grace through faith without works doesn't mean we have some type of license to where we should just do whatever we want to. So we'll... We need to do good works for the remainder of 2020, not to get saved or stay saved, but because we want to please God and follow His commands. But this has been seven things you can do for the remainder of 2020. Seven mid-year Bible resolutions for 2020.